How many use uh, WooCommerce here? Wow. Shall we assume that everybody who uses WordPress also uses WooCommerce? <laughs> I think I chose a good topic then. So I will introduce myself first. I started as a blogger. I still blog. Uh, I can say that safely because I posted one article yesterday on my personal blog after long, long time. <laughs> and I am first RT camper. That's I like more about than being CEO of RT camp. And I am obsessed with, uh, with speed. Uh, those who read my yesterday's article know better about my obsession for speed. <laughs> and uh, I have another job. I also do two jobs like Deepak. Uh, I uh, distribute sandwiches at WordCamp Pune. So if you like to have some tasty sandwich, you can uh, join us on WordCamp Pune. So let's start. Oh, I, I got the wrong slide here. That for the Mac. Yeah, this is where we go. So uh, I will just uh, take a quick overview of uh, current caching methods uh, that are common. Because as uh, we all know, WordPress is more uh, widely used for blog and CMS. Um, so this is typically a WordPress stack looks like. Uh, this is my favorite architecture diagram. Put it in any proposal, and I get any rate for that. So basically, we have Nginx, WordPress, PHP, and MySQL. Usually, I call it as a, a three-tier architecture. And the deal is to handle almost entire traffic at Nginx level. That's how you scale. Because uh, PHP uh, is very costly in terms of memory, CPU cycle. So the more load you handle at uh, Nginx level, uh, the maximum traffic you can serve uh, using limited hardware. But now this typical architecture doesn't work at WooCommerce level. Because for WooCommerce, we have output that depends on customers. Like we have a My Account section. There is a uh, shopping cart widget in the sidebar. And then there are some uh, URLs which are same, but will show different output like cart pages, then checkout pages, and even my account page where uh, everybody sees a different download, like their order history and all. So WooCommerce at Nginx level won't work. We have a problem. And this problem is exactly what uh, I'm trying to solve today. So scaling WooCommerce at each tier, like I showed you a diagram uh, with Nginx, PHP, and uh, MySQL. So we will see how at each level we can do something that will make WooCommerce more scalable. So let's start with uh, Nginx level first, my favorite level. So this is a typical WordPress site. This is a storefront theme. Uh, I just uh, use the WooCommerce official demo. If you see, there is this uh, amount that is showing. This is the cart section. And then this is the item. So if you look, only these two parts are dynamic. Uh, other part of pages are quite static. Like they don't change per user. They are like the typical product listing. Your menu, they remain same for everybody. So now. You can cache product pages also using Nginx. So usually this is uh, not common, but we are doing it from last two years and without turning into problem. The idea is uh, for uh, this kind of uh, things, the card and widgets, you basically use, uh, one of the technique is to use uh, Ajax, like uh, you don't who uh, produce output in PHP directly, but you load the pages first, then have something kind of like placeholder for this area and load uh, content using Ajax. But this is a bit complicated. Not all WordPress themes will like it. So we have another technique that I call window shopping technique. And this is not trademark, even though the name looks like one. So how, how does window shopping work? Like, um, you go to a store, and uh, like a store has many visitors, but uh, when salesmen approach you, they say, I'm just looking. So basically, will you uh, allocate your salesman to the person who is just looking? So the idea is uh, to basically 
divide your audience between the people who are just looking and people who are actually uh, serious uh, to buy something. And uh, then what you do basically, um, you cache entire pages first. You, you cache entire site, like, like a normal WordPress blog. Like a normal WordPress blog, you can cache entire WooCommerce site. And then you monitor WooCommerce cookie. I will show you which cookie to monitor. Uh, uh, basically WooCommerce, uh, like uh, I have seen two, two cookies in WooCommerce. One cookie basically uh, is a, like a flag. It tells you whether uh, there is something added into the cart or not. So you basically monitor that cookie. And when user adds something, that cookie will set. That cookie will have a val value. Using that value, you can flip the cache. So like if you get 10 visitor, seven are not buying anything, they're just looking, you can show them completely cached site. And the three people who are buying something, you can show them different uh, uh, output. Basically, they won't say anything, cache it. They will see a normal website. That way, uh, like in holiday season, most of the stores uh, that I handle as part of my job, uh, like WooCommerce stores, they get a lot of high traffic, but conversion uh, ratio is quite low, like around 10, 20 percent. So, so basically, this technique uh, easily deals their 80 percent traffic, the, the 80 percent traffic which doesn't buy anything. So, so this technique uh, handles it very nicely, as nicely as a normal WordPress blogger team would work. So the summary at Nginx tire, the session is not ending, this is just one tire. <laughs> <laughs> so faster site for the folks who are just looking. And uh, as I said, uh, as you are caching entire site for them, you can handle spikes. But what about folks who are actually buying? You, you don't create store for people who are just here, here to uh, uh, like do window shopping. You want to create site to sell to the actual people. And this is where we need to deal with two more tires that I usually avoided. Like uh, in previous sessions, those who have attended my previous session, I never mentioned about PHU MySQL uh, scaling because uh, the, the deal was we were handling everything at Nginx level. But now uh, the guy who added something to the cart, now that guy need to be dealt at PHP as well as MySQL level. So let's start PHP level first. So the first thing is to use WordPress object cache. So it might sound complicated, but it's as easy as installing this plugin, really. Of course, uh, this plugin will work when your server have Redis cache. That also means do not use any kind of shared hosting for WooCommerce, never. You need to have a VPS dedicated server where you can install your own Redis memcache. Uh, memcache also works, but my favorite is Redis, and that is what we have uh, in easy engine also. So basically if you are easy engine you don't have to worry about this. It, it, it's going to be there beforehand. And apart from object cache, there is something called transient API in WordPress. So when you add Redis cache, it will also benefit transient API. So except that window uh, shopping technique, everything uh, I'm describing here is applicable to all WordPress sites, be it a membership site, be it ED site, be it a body press site. And as I said, like we already have some support for this in Easy Engine. You just have to put WP Redis flag and you will get everything. The second part is use PHP 7. Uh, uh, it's new, it's working nice. We also have it in P, uh, Easy Engine. The tough part, easy part is what Easy Engine can cover in, in one command, but there is a tough part. And that is the biggest part is architecture. Your PHP site, we just saw that Ajax thing, right? Uh, uh, in, in entire page, only cart was the dynamic element. You have to design your architecture keeping that in mind that my store is going to get a lot of traffic and I need just this cart widget that need to be dynamic and that I can move to the Ajax. Or even better, you can use something like uh, the buzzword, like. So, in just uh, in panel discussion, uh, we observe that riding the wave. So riding the wave, uh, you can do it at uh, technology level also. Everybody is moving to the React. So maybe you can build entire WooCommerce site in React. We are doing that. Uh, the idea is to create uh, something like one-page checkout experience. Uh, 
for a specific client where we are building complete site in uh, like for one client we are using angular js for one another client we are doing react then code quality obviously there is no excuse if your code uh, code is not good i'm selling your code not woocommerce code woocommerce is pretty good frankly if you are if you are not getting 1000 orders a day or 10000 orders a day and you are running into woocommerce uh, scaling problem you should check whether you have any bad code bad code as in your bad code maybe your customization maybe third party plugins you are using so most people uh, if forget the code quality so the first thing is you you should have fast code and readable uh, if a code is readable that doesn't make it automatically fast so following coding standard is not something that will guarantee that the code is optimized and if you stuck somewhere you can debug like a hero that was i explained in my last session now this is the part uh, where i'm i'm also struggling like uh, but uh, i'm struggling to handle something uh, very high transaction rate maybe like um, 100000 transactions a day that is i'm benchmarking for uh, less than that you can follow this common technique first if you are doing any any mysql kind of site which depends on a lot of mysql users use ssd backed hardware do not use like shared hosting that's that that's never going to be part of discussion but when you move to the dedicated server now you have to again check uh, are you uh, are you using sata hard drive or ssd hard drive this might sound be technical but this is the biggest deal breaker always use ssd there is no exception for any database and have plenty of ram ideally uh, you have some tool like mysql tuner which can give you parameter by parameter details of how to optimize your hardware and uh, ram and configuration but rule of thumb is say your mysql database if you take a normal dump unzip dump if it says 1 gb then you should have at least 2 gb ram so your ram size should be much more than your entire database size and then cpu core cpu core will come in handy to get uh, to handle a lot of concurrent connection so without good hardware don't expect woocommerce or uh, to work for you like for anybody come on you are you are you are running a woocommerce site to make money at least put some money in good hosting and then software part so after that uh, you can use slow query log to find out uh, where is the bottleneck uh, sometimes your code can conflict we had a plugin uh, we did 2 years ago uh, there was some problem uh, where we were doing some bulk operation and woocommerce has a uh, action defined uh, in that particular area so that was slowing down our bulk operation so we we caught it using slow query log and uh, php analysis and when we found that in morning somebody asked like what to do when there is a conflict so so like add action, do action or add filter you can do, uh, you can call remove action also so during our bulk import uh, we managed to remove that action that uh, woocommerce was conflicting with us because in that particular area woocommerce that action wasn't necessary but those kind of software optimization are only possible if you know how to debug your slow query log and then this is a new plugin uh, elastic search uh, how many are aware of uh, elastic search have you used elastic search so there is elastic search for woocommerce this is a good plugin by tenup i guess and it's a uh, and there are two people from tenup here you can catch them uh, three okay i know only two <laughs> so uh, this is a very good plugin it will make wonders to your woocommerce store please use it and this is free and, th and then again wordpress object cache because uh, the the wordpress object cache that we saw uh, as a php plugin every request that reaches cache will not reach your mysql so your mysql will have less load if you have ob object cache and finally use mysql tuner to tweak each parameter there are, there are many parameters uh, i initially had them in my slide but that slide what uh, was looking too messy so i removed them uh, but there are there are parameters that can uh, basically uh, it's like it's, it's a trade off you want more guarantee as in uh, when machine crashes or you want uh, more uh, or you want faster speed 
So, so there are parameter in MySQL which you can tweak to get more speed. And MySQL tuner can help you. Do not follow blindly. MySQL tuner can sometimes give you very wrong uh, assumptions. And this is, what is this, 10071? The only problem I have seen in WooCommerce was not using custom table. So there is a ticket in GitHub for uh, selected for WooCommerce 3.0. So, 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 uh, so, and this is for the people who are, who are facing uh, really problem scaling, say, 100,000 orders a day. How many handles 10,000 orders a day here? 10,000 orders for a WooCommerce. Right? Doesn't matter, order size doesn't matter. Are you selling $1 free pay, doesn't matter. $1,000, 1,000 orders a day? 100 orders a day. So why are you attending this? <laughs> you don't need this. <laughs> so that's it. This uh, this is the ticket that is uh, really uh, needed. We want for, to reach there. Yeah. Uh, by the time you will reach there, I hope uh, WooCommerce 3.0 will be there. This uh, ticket will be done. And till, till that time, you can use the things I have mentioned previously. So that's it. Thank you. Sorry, no demo this time.